Hello everyone. So let's get started into today's video and this video is all about oogenesis. So what is oogenesis? Oogenesis is the formation, the process of formation of the haploid female gamete ova from the diploid reproductive cells, those are oogonia in the ovary. So oogenesis is totally different from the spermatogenesis where Spermatogenesis is a process which is said to be a continuous process while oogenesis is a process which is said to be discontinuous process. So what are the phases which are involved in the oogenesis? Oogenesis mainly consists of three phases as you can see in both the, the descriptive part as well as in the schematic part. The first phase is called as the multiplication phase. Second phase is called as the growth phase. And third one is called as the maturation phase. So what all the changes occurs in these phases? So let us discuss it. So multiplication phase occurs generally in the fetal life. Growth phase occurs in the childhood. And maturation phase occurs once after the female attains puberty. So in the multiplication phase, which generally occurs during the fetal life, so, how the oogonias are being formed? So, as we have discussed in the earlier videos, that seventh week of the embryonic development is very, very important because gonadal differentiation occurs. And the formation of the ovary occurs by that of the two genes as we have discussed, WNT4 and DAX1 genes. So, once the ovaries are being formed, during the 15th week of the embryonic development till around the 30th week of the fetal life, the germinal epithelial cells, okay, so these start dividing mitotically and they give rise to the cells called as oogonia. Oogonia are in turn called as egg mother cells or precursors of the ova. So, it is being estimated that when the oogonial proliferation occurs continuously, around 2 to 3 million of the oogonia are being formed and these oogonia are being formed in the form of egg nest or the egg tubes in the ovary. Next, this oogonia proliferation occurs till the young one, that is a female child is being delivered, which means once after the girl child is being delivered, further there is no oogonial proliferation, which means oogonial proliferation is being confined, restricted only till the fetal life, but not after the young one is delivered. So thereafter what happens? During the next phase, the once the oogonial proliferation it's completed, thereafter the female child is willing delivered and thereafter is the next phase which starts that is called as growth phase. So growth phase is the second phase in the oogenesis which is longer okay, when compared to that of the growth phase of the spermatogenesis. So what happens during the growth phase? As the name itself indicates that here the cell undergoes growth, which means it increases in the size. So which cell? So oogonia are those cells which are present. So they get transformed into the primary oocyte, which means the process of conversion of the oogonia into oocyte is called as oocytogenesis, which occurs in the childhood of the girl or the female. So what happens here? What are the changes are being seen from the oogonia to get converted into oocyte? So as I mentioned that oogonia which are being 2 to 3 million in number, they start getting reduced. Why it is so? Because of the lack of nutrients which are being getting to that of these cells. So majority of the cells will die and that is what we have discussed in the earlier video that is called as atresia. And the follicles which have been undergone atresia, they are called as atritic follicles and the process is called as follicular atresia. Which means the primary oocyte which is being formed here from the oogonia. 
So what all the changes are being seen? So changes are the primary oocyte which is being formed. So this primary oocyte uh, here uh, in the oogonia there is a deposition of the fats, proteins, deutoplasm, phosphovitin. So when all these accumulates, when all these nutrients accumulate in the oogonia, it forms a heavy region and that heavy region which is being deposited in the oogonia results in the formation that starts moving towards one side and results in the formation of the vegetal pole. And the opposite side of this vegetal pole is called as animal pole. Thereafter, the cytoplasm which is present in the oogonia that starts increasing in the RNA, DNA, ATP and enzymes. Cell organelles which are present in the oogonia such as mitochondria, ribosomes, Golgi apparatus, they start concentrating. It is not only I mean, uh, confined to that of the cell organelle, one of the cell organelle which is the nucleus, so this nucleus also start increasing in the size, that is by increase in the nucleoplasm. So nucleoplasm starts increasing. Thereafter, the genetic material, here you can see that oogonia are deployed, which means 46 chromosomes are present. So among the chromosomes also, there are the changes which occurs, where these chromosomes, which are there in the oogonia, now become giant lamp breast chromosomes. When all these changes are occurring in the oogonia, the oogonia now is larger in size. Enormously, the oogonia will get converted into the oocyte. And this primary oocyte which is being formed, so that is being arrested. So this, why it is being arrested? Because here, for the further changes, whatever the meiosis has to occur, for that it requires the hormonal changes. So that is being lacking during the childhood. So henceforth, the primary oocyte is being arrested in the diplotein of the prophase 1 of the meiosis. So as it is being arrested, the primary oocyte is being seen in the primordial, primary as well as the secondary follicles. So thereafter, what happens next? From the growth phase, during the growth phase, the primary oocyte is being formed from the oogonia. Later what happens? Later, the third phase will start, that is maturation phase. So maturation phase will occur once a female attains puberty. So under the influence of the hormones, what all the changes will happen where the primary oocyte will now get converted into a secondary oocyte. In the primary oocyte, the nucleus which is present, so that nucleus starts shifting towards uh, the animal pole and thereafter the nucleus which is present, which is deployed, now it undergoes the division that is because resumption of the meiosis takes place, which means diplotin whatever the stages are there of the prophase that gets converted and finally prophase becomes enters into uh, metaphase, anaphase, telophase and further it enters into the prophase 2. So thereafter there is what happens is two cells are being formed at the end of the prophase, sorry at the end of meiosis 1 which results into formation of the two cells and here you can observe the two cells are different in the sizes. One cell is smaller in size, the other one is larger in size. So this happens due to unequal division of the cytoplasm. That is what called as unequal cytokinesis. But the chromosomal complement which is there, that remains the same. That both are haploid, which means 23 chromosomes. Now, what is the reason why in one cell, there is accumulation of more cytoplasm and another cell, there is accumulation of less cytoplasm. This is because what happens is this uh, secondary oocyte which is being formed from the primary oocyte, so this is the cell which gets converted into the ova. So if the secondary oocyte does not contain enough of the cytoplasm, then possibly uh, once after the fertilization takes place, possibility due to lack of the nutrients present in the cell, further the division of the cell may not occur after the zygote and possibly due to lack of the nutrients, the embryo may not survive. 
Henceforth, the unequal cytokinesis results into one a larger cell which is called a secondary oocyte and the other one is the smaller cell which is the first polar body or primary polar body or polocyte. So that has been occurring in case of the maturation phase. Now the secondary oocyte which is being formed under the influence of the hormones. So this secondary oocyte gets arrested in metaphase 2 which means here as there is a lacking of one of the factor what we can say is a maturation promoting factor. So due to lack of that factor the secondary oocyte gets arrested in the metaphase 2 of the meiosis 2. So later when the secondary oocyte will get converted into ova. So that occurs only that is during the process of fertilization which means when the secondary oocyte is being formed and this secondary oocyte in the females continuously it is being ovulated on the 14th day of the menstrual cycle and once this secondary oocyte once a girl gets married and thereafter the copulation takes place at that time once the sperm enters into that of the secondary oocyte so this sperm brings about that maturation promoting factor thereby whatever the uh, secondary oocyte is being arrested so there again the resumption of the meiosis takes place thereby the secondary oocyte enters into the anaphase 2 telophase 2 and again it gives rise to two more cells so here also you can see that uh, the meiosis 2 what happens is again unequal cytokinesis takes place by which there is formation of a large cell where it has abundant of the cytoplasm so that is called as wooted and the other one again the smaller cell so that is called as the second polar body. Now so this formation of the, the process of conversion of the second oocyte into an wooted so this entire process is called as ootidogenesis. Is that clear? So here the first polar body which has the chromosomal haploid set of chromosome this polar body may divide may not divide but the second oocyte has been divided when, when it undergoes the second meiosis giving rise to ooted and a second polar body. So thereafter what is this ooted? Why this ooted is being formed? Ooted is a cell uh, where we can say it is uh, uh, very similar to that of the spermatid which is being formed in the spermatogenesis, uh, spermatogenesis process where the spermatid was said to be uh, non-motile, non-functional, immature cell. Similarly here, ooted is also a non-functional and uh, immature ova. Okay, So this ooted which is being formed, it is immature. And uh, surrounding to that of the zona pellucida of this ooted, the polar bodies are being present. Now when this ooted will get converted into ova. So as soon as the sperm enters into that of the secondary oocyte, so these uh, changes occurs where the secondary oocyte will get converted into ooted and within minutes, within minutes there is extrusion of the polar bodies and thereby the ooted will now get converted into ova and within minutes the entire ova will get converted into the zygote. Is that clear? So that ova will get converted into zygote where the haploid set of the male chromosomes will fuse with that of the haploid set of the female uh, chromosomes and results in the formation of zygote. Now, so this is the oogenesis where it starts during the fetal life and ends after the fertilization. Okay, so here why it is called as discontinuous because you can see here during the growth phase the primary oocyte is arrested and this arrested uh, of the primary oocyte extends for months to years, years together that is from the childhood till the female reaches the puberty the female ovary has a primary oocyte. So once she attains a puberty there is a resumption of the meiosis and thereafter again the primary oocyte gets converted into secondary oocyte again there is arresting so again arresting that is till the sperm enters into the secondary oocyte so as there is a pause in the oogenesis process where the arresting is being seen the entire oogenesis process is called as discontinuous process now so 
what is the importance of these polar bodies which are being formed during the maturation phase or during the fertilization phase if they don't have any function then why they are to be produced the very important point here is that the polar bodies are meant for maintaining the chromosomal number so they uh, maintain or stability the chromosome number see because here it is the diploid cell if it will divide into two equal cells okay so thereafter there is a possibility that the sperm may even fuse with that of the polar body and that does not result into the zygote but here as there is abundant quantity of the cytoplasm in the secondary oocyte the sperm will fuse to that of this and that results in the formation of zygote so function of the polar body is to maintain the chromosomal complement in case of the cell so at the end of as we have discussed in the spermatogenesis that one spermatogonia gives rise to four functional sperms in the oogenesis the result of oogenesis is there is a formation of one functional ova and two polar bodies so this is all about today's video that is about the oogenesis so for your neat and aims you have to remember where the primary oocyte is arrested where the secondary oocyte is arrested and what is required for resumption of the meiosis okay so this is all about the oogenesis thank you